Hello everyone. Have you ever heard about three terminal capacitors? If so, have you ever used them? And what is your feedback? I know, according to the manufacturer's data sheets, one of the main benefits of using these three terminal capacitors are their extremely low equivalent series inductance (ESL). Because effectively, rather than having one grounding point, you have two grounding points for these. Terminal three terminal capacitors, but how good are they? Especially when you're using them in a real life PCB design. So in today's episode, I'm going to find a fair comparison between a two terminal capacitor and a three terminal capacitor, and let's find out whether the three terminal capacitors are that good according to the data sheets. So let's have a look at how we compare the performance of the three terminal capacitor and the two terminal capacitor. Here, as my uh, as many of you may be familiar with, I used this demonstration jig in the past for future performance and also uh, things like uh, ferrite core performance check. Right. Uh, simply speaking, um, when connected, uh, the input and output of this uh, PCB to a uh, VNA, for example, because VNA has 50 ohm input and output impedance uh, on different ports, and then work together with the resistance uh, network here, I can create a uh, sort of low impedance input, low impedance output, or high impedance um, input and high impedance output, right? So representing an 80 and 180 ohms. Then I can uh, place different uh, test PCB boards, small daughter boards on this motherboard to test different things. So in this case, as you can see, this PCB is designed in a way that uh, I can test a uh, typically, I can test a simple service mounted uh, multi-layer ceramic capacitor uh, on this uh, trace and compare the performance when I place the three terminal capacitor on uh, this uh, track right so that's how we're gonna um, uh, test it so what I'm going to do is mount a three terminal capacitor here and a traditional two terminal capacitor here and then compare the performance um, of the uh, capacitor using our uh, VNA and the capacitors we're going to use to compare the performance, the first one is this one, okay? So this is from Murata called NFM series. You can see the capacitance value is 10 nanofarads. It's a 1206 size, 50 volts rated, but it has a 20% um, tolerance, okay? It didn't say the dielectric constants um, or dielectric material used for this series, but I suspect it's gonna most likely X5R also, okay? So that's the uh, three terminal capacitors we're going to use for comparison. As you can see here, that's really the capacitor here. So in order to compare uh, with a sort of good comparison, I picked a, a, uh, a capacitor, also 1206 size, X7R material, okay? Um, so has a 10% uh, tolerance, and with the same value, so that would be this one here, 10 nanofarads, uh, 50 volts rated, um, X7R uh, capacitor. So it might be not a the best comparison, but this is perhaps the best we could find in our um, catalog. Okay, so we're going to compare this one with um, the Murata 3 terminal capacitor. Okay, I'm going to also have a quick check on the capacitance value of this uh, small small capacitor, just have a quick check. It's gonna be tricky because this ca capacitor, the ground is on the side. So let's see if I can actually measure it uh, using this small tweezer meter. So yeah, it gives me 9.69 nanofarads, okay? 9.69 nanofarads. Um, not sure if you can see it from the camera, but it is 9.69 nanofarads. Okay, so that's the three terminal one. Now we're gonna pick up the, the other two terminal one. So that's the 10 nanofarad capacitor. Let's have a look. 9.4 uh, one. Okay, so not too bad. 9.6 against 9.4. Because the first three terminal capacitor is 9.6. I wanted to have a really good comparison, so I'm picking up another one. Let's just see the capacitance value here. 
So the capacitor values in this case, the second one is 9.4, okay, just about 9.49, 9.47. So it's better than the first one as a comparison. So I'm going to use the this 9.4 nanofarad to have a fair comparison, okay, uh, between the two capacitors. So I put the first back in, and I'm going to use this one. Okay, do my best. So the three terminal capacitor so that the grounding point is is pretty much both sides are grounded okay so now we have the comparison results just very quickly to explain what i did okay so i have the demonstration jig as i explained and what i did is first i calibrate uh, i performed a through calibration using the vna then what i did is i compared the performance of the two capacitor this um normal capacitor MLCC against the three terminal capacitor okay so I saved the results so the uh, black trace showing here is um, the single 10 nanofarad ML MLCC capacitor whereas the one that I'm measuring at the moment showing in red is the three terminal capacitor I use the high impedance pass routes because uh, for a single capacitor, it works the best when it is used in a, a condition where the both the source and the load impedance is high. Okay, so just just ready to show you that I, I what I did. Okay, so now I can get rid of this board. Okay, now I can then connect back to the the second trace right where um, it's just a single capacitor, and you can see that. The results is aligned with each other right and the three terminal one basically is this one okay so as you can see in terms of the capacitance value both as we measured before are pretty much the same this is reflected if you look at the frequency spectrum from 1 megahertz to about 50 megahertz this is where the ESR of the capacitor and also the capacitance of the capacitor um, takes effect. However, the point as you can really see from here is that a normal two two terminal capacitor, right, as the frequency start to increase, the ESL starts to taking uh, effect. Whereas the three terminal capacitor, due to the fact that it has two grounding points, right, it almost like half the inductance of of the ESL. And as a result, in the inductive range, you achieve a lower impedance. Okay, so that means that if you're using this capacitor value, let's say uh, ten nanofarads for sort of a broadband suppression between. Uh, uh, 20 megahertz all the way to about 100 megahertz let's say in the frequency region between say 50 megahertz and 100 megahertz the three terminal capacitor would have better performance and how good they are well to the maximum of our 10 dB reduction for the signal you trying to suppress and that's quite consistent all the way up to higher frequency of course, you wouldn't use these capacitors, let's say, in this frequency range. It just doesn't make any sense. But because of the construction of the three terminal capacitor, you, you do get benefits in this frequency range. Now the question we are going to ask next is, okay, so that's, you know, it's all makes sense because of, you know, the low ESL is due to the grounding point um, that, uh, you know, increased. Um, but of course, to make a three terminal footprint and buying a three terminal capacitor is a little bit more expensive than using a normal two terminal capacitor. So the question is, if that's the case, um, can we do similar things uh, using you know the two capacitors, right? So if I have two two terminal capacitors, let's say similar value. Uh, 10 nanofarads in this case, if I put them in parallel, would that give me similar results? So let's have a look. What we did, as you can see, now we put another capacitor, the same value as the 10 nanofarad capacitor. Same value, same dielectric constant, same footprint. And when you place two capacitors of the same value, the best practice is really to keep some distance, and this 
is uh, beautifully illustrated and explained in Professor Todd Hubin's work, and I hope I can have some time later to demonstrate this point. But anyway, so that's what we did, right? Using two capacitors of the same value, 10 nanofarad, compare this result with the previous results. Now, as you can see, so obviously now I have 20 nanofarads rather than 10 nanofarads. Therefore, in the capacitive range, I achieve better results, about 10 dB uh, uh, better, right? That makes sense. But as you can see, in the inductive region, it also brings me the benefits. It also brings me the benefit of achieving lower um, ESL, okay? So that means, right, if I, rather than using two 10 nanofarad capacitor, if I had five nanofarad uh, capacitor, which I don't at the moment. If I had, let's say, two 5 nanofarad capacitor, I can place in this manner, then I can have pretty much the same results in the capacitive region, and also I have a relatively good result in the ESL region, right? But just as this demonstration shows, okay, if you look at the key sort of um, uh, region, we still define as a few tens of megahertz, let's say 40 megahertz, to about 100 megahertz, the performance by using two capacitors in parallel can still not really match with a three-terminal capacitor, which now is showing in, in green. This is the region, right? You can see there are still about 5 to 8 dB difference there, right? Also, you can see is that sometimes there's a little bit of resonance here and that's the problem when you use multiple capacitors in parallel so yeah this comparison does show that the three terminal capacitor topology does have its advantage compared with a two terminal capacitor okay so yeah hopefully you learn something in this episode same as me you know uh, i always read uh, data sheets but this is really the first time i i saw uh, the the performance comparison myself and uh, we'll see you next time.